Let us discuss next problem dear students. Look at this. Let f of x is equal to 1, x less than or equal to minus 1. Mod x if minus 1 less than x less than 1, 0 for x greater than or equal to 1, then f is option a 1 1, option b not differentiable at x is equal to minus 1, option c even function and option d always positive. You can easily analyze this by using the concept of graph. Look at this dear students, using graphical approach is the best approach for mathematics. Now, x is equal to 0 for x greater than or equal to 1. x is equal to 0 if x is greater than or equal to 1. See here, x is equal to 0 for x greater than or equal to 1. So, we got it and x is equal to mod x, f of x is equal to mod x when x lies between minus 1 and plus 1. Mod x is a graph like this. When it lies between minus 1 and plus 1, it is mod x. See here, so this is the graph of f of x between minus 1 to plus 1 and it is equal to 1 if x is less than minus 1. It is equal to 1. See it is equal to 1 if x is less than minus 1. See, it is equal to 1 if x is less than minus 1. That means to say like this. So, the graph is clearly like this. It is 1 for x less than minus 1 mod x if x is x lies between minus 1 and 1, 0 if x is greater than or equal to 1. Now, is it 1 1 is a question now. Definitely dear students, it is not at all 1 1 because if I draw a graph parallel to x axis, it meets the graph at more than one point. Therefore, option A is a false. That means to see it cannot be 1 1. Now coming to the second part, not differentiable at x is equal to minus 1. Look at the graph of f of x dear students. The graph is like this, correct? It is definitely not differentiable at x is equal to minus 1, no doubt about it. But it is continuous at x is equal to minus 1. But it is discontinuous at x is equal to 1. It is discontinuous at x is equal to 1, continuous at x is equal to minus 1. So that means to say function is not differentiable at x is equal to minus 1 is 100 percent correct. Now is it an even function? Suppose the graph is continued like this, then we would have said the graph is even because y axis acts as a mirror. But as the graph is like this, it is not an even function and that does not mean it is an odd function. Not all non-even functions are odd functions. There is one more category that is called as neither, neither category that is neither even nor odd category. Always positive, it looks like correct. See here, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive, but still I will put wrong mark to this, what is the reason? There is a clear difference between positive and non-negative. Positive means greater than 0, non-negative is including 0. If the question is given, option D, sorry, it is printed as C, do not worry. So, if the in option D, if we had always non-negative, then I would have said yes, this is correct but it is positive. There is a difference between positive and non-negative. Therefore, option D is also false. Only option B is correct. See, how do you say it is not differentiable at x is equal to minus 1? Wherever you have a sharp edge in the graph, call that point as a non-differentiable point. Got it dear students? Yes. Please make a note of this. We shall go to next problem. This problem is taken from joint entrance exam. The question is like this. Limit x tends to 0, 1 minus cos 2x into 3 plus cos x divided by x tan 4x is option A 0.5, option B 1, option C 2 and option D is minus 0.25. Dear students, this is limit x tends to 0, limit x tends to 0, 1 minus cos x is given by 2 sin square x. 
into 3 plus cos x, 3 plus cos x divided by divided by x tan 4 x, I will write it as x into 4 x, okay. in the next step let me write it x tan 4 x. Do you agree with me dear students, I can replace x sin x by x when limit x tends to 0, limit x tends to 0, I can write it as 2 x square into 3 plus cos x, 3 plus cos x divided by x into 4 x. I have explained you this already several times. x square x x x square cancels, 2 2s are 4, 3 plus cos x divided by 2, 3 plus cos 0 that is 1, 3 plus 1, 4 divided by 2 that is equal to 2. Therefore, option C is correct. I hope dear students you have followed this. Right? This is a problem taken from joint interest exam and it is very, very simple. Now, let us discuss next set of problem. And dear students, till now we have discussed lot of problems based on continuity, differentiability, limits and functions. In our next session, we will be talking about differentiation, application of derivatives and remaining part of calculus. I hope you will be well prepared to my next session. Dear students, welcome to Vikasana program. In today's session, we will be talking about first year algebra. In particular, we will be talking about two major topics that is quadratics, progressions, sequences and series. I know dear students, you have been studying quadratic equations since you joined your high school and you must be familiar with various formulae which are involved in progressions like arithmetic progression, geometric progression, harmonic progression. I hope you know the basics of harmonic mean, arithmetic mean and geometric mean. Sometimes we will be talking about the inequalities which are related to this. Quadratic equation is the one which you have studied maybe when you started your career in high school itself. Hoping that you know the basics of this, we will be talking about different problems of JE level and Karnataka CET level. Here each and every problem whatever we are going to discuss will have a shortcut. Learn those shortcuts. Once again I am repeating, you must not spend more than 20 to 25 seconds to solve a problem in quadratic or progression even in complex numbers or any other topic which are related to algebra. Let us discuss one problem here, this is taken from your entrance exam. Look at the question, 7 times 7th term of an AP is equal to 11 times 11th term, then 18th term is, dear students, if you look at this particular problem, you should have to use the standard method. What is the standard method? T7 is equal to A plus 60, A plus 60 into 7 is equal to a plus 10 d into 11. Then you have to solve for a and d, then you have to find out 18th term. No need to do all those things dear students. Look at this, let me write the logic here. 7 times 7th term, 7th times 7th term is equal to 11 times 11th term. This is what is given. 7th time, 7 times 7th term is equal to 11 times 11th term. How to solve this dear students? Look at this. 7 times 7th term, 11 times 11th term. We will make this as 11 and this as 7. So that we will get 7 into 11 is equal to 11 into 7. Observe carefully, this is the constant 7 this is constant 11 and this 11 and 7 are assumed numbers because so that 77 is equal to 77. This is a small assumption we made here. Now let us try to analyze. Of course, this is equal to this. 7 times 7th term is equal to 11 times 11th term, right? 7th term is 11. Do you agree with me? 
11 this is seventh term is it correct seventh term then we have 7 times 7 term is 11 times 11 term. What is 11 term now? 11 term is 7. Do you agree with me? 11th term is 7. This is 11th term. I hope you are understanding this. This is 7th term and this is 11th term. Right. Can you guess what is 8th term, 9th term and 10th term? 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Do you agree with me? So, numbers must be like this. 11, 10 is 8th term, 9 is 9th term, 8 is 10th term, 7 is 11th term. So, can you tell me what is the sequence? This is a sequence of set of natural numbers. Now, our answer will be very easy. We got 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. So, what do you want now? What is 18th term? Look at this. 11th term is 7 and you can see 7th term is 11 means it is a reducing sequence. So, the number must be less than 7. Do you agree with me? That clearly says option B is ruled out and option D is also ruled out. And our confusion is whether 18th term is 0 or 1. Let us see. We have 7 followed by 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1 like that. Now, this is 11th term, this is 12th, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This is 18th term. So, 18th term is 0, therefore option A is correct. You can observe one very important thing here dear students. We have not used any formula. What we have used? We have just used common sense. If you have common sense, you can solve at least 15 to 20 percent of the problems given in your CET paper. And of course, for that, you need only 5 to 10 seconds. Hope you have followed this. Now, let us go to the next problem. <music>